Welcome back to the Grace Escape Podcast. Yes. Welcome one. Welcome all. Hi, I'm Justin. I'm Tiffany. And by grace, we escaped a high control, fundamental, legalistic. I added that new one today. Yeah. And boy, was it. Church organization called the United Pentecostal Church. We spent over 30 years in it to anyone that is new. Um, and by the grace of God, he helped us escape. Yeah, we hear from other people that weren't in the UPC because we're not just talking to those no um, folks. No. Although that's our experience specifically. But yeah. yeah, if you were in a high control, fundamental, charismatic type church, um, hopefully our conversations help. Yeah. Oh, the word I forgot to say was oneness, which was kind of... UPC specific a little bit, but, um, doesn't yeah, matter. We're talking to all the, charismatic, yeah. hyper charismatic church. Yeah. Hyper, hyper, hyper <laughs> being the key word sometimes. Very hyper. Um, rolling on the ground. Uh, we've been known to get wild. Yeah. If you, I heard, won't sing this week since last week you told me that, you know, no one wants to hear me sing these crazy songs. Um, what are we going to talk about today? Um, today we're going to um, give a strong appeal to those that might be listening that are in still in church or um, on the border, mm-hmm. on the fence, as some might say, <laughs> one foot in, one foot out. Remember, did you ever hear that when you were in church? Oh, one foot in the church, billions. one foot, one foot in the world. Yeah. It's very dangerous. You don't walk the fence. That's what they would say. Yeah. Because, Lord forbid, you fall over onto the world side. So we want to um, give a strong appeal to those um, that are maybe need a little bit of encouragement or... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and this isn't, again, just for people still in the UPC, um, but it could be. uh, It could be just if you're in a Bible study. you know, As simple as that, yeah. What we're really wanting to do is it's easy to just believe what people are telling you is really our point for today. Yeah, and I would just put a disclaimer to... um, if we haven't already said it, and I believe we have, don't believe everything we say. Yes. Um, we're not the one for all, and we're just here to share our journey and try to help people in the best that we can through the Word of God yeah, and through our experiences and what we've come to learn since our exit from this kind of high control um, system. And yeah. If you haven't been part of it um, or part of a church like the UPC or a really strong fundamental church, you might not really understand all the degrees to which mm-hmm. it can affect you spiritually, mentally, even physically. All the ways, um, yeah. Financially. I mean, yeah. All the ways. All the ways. <laughs> um, um so, yeah, I mean, we may not get everything right every time either. So the point is today we want to make an appeal to, for all Christians to be listening to what they're being told or taught. Yeah. And we have a biblical mandate to test and compare what people say to us or teach to us, especially if they're saying it in the name of God, we have a biblical mandate to compare that to the word of God. Yeah, I think one of the things we've learned since being out of the UPC is we weren't equipped to be self-sufficient in our salvation. We were very dependent on what the preacher slash pastor was saying each week. And it's kind of a comfort blanket, so to speak, that, oh, as long as I am just sitting under a pastor in a church, the one and only true church... Yeah, that's what um, we were told. Then, and I'm checking the boxes, the legalistic boxes of 
praying so long each day or reading my Bible so long each day, not really understanding or studying or anything of that nature, Mm -hmm. then I'm just kind of in this, I don't know. Safe. Well, just lulled to sleep is what I was going to say. Yeah. In a way. I mean, I just, uh, it's one of my regrets. Yeah. One of my big regrets is that I didn't open God's word without a filter, without the glasses of the organization that we were part of and really study the context, the history of the church. And um, I think that is so important. It's just so vitally important. Yeah. We're going to read some scripture today that um, tells us to be good workmen, you know, of the Bible and to test spirits and to be aware of false prophets, things like that. So we do have a mandate to, we don't, you know... uh, on this podcast, we are not trying to poke fun. We are not coming against necessarily people and specifically we are coming against man-made systems that claim to be the church of the living God, but they're not even reading scripture a lot of the time. Yeah. And I, I think the scary thing is, is when you are in a church and, um, you have the feel good sensation that, the music yes. can can do, and we've talked about that previously. It's really easy to believe what people are telling you. Yeah. Um, and if and if you think they're saying it in the name of God, then which is what they tell you, then you can just believe it without any sort of fact finding, checking what the scripture says. Um, and that's what we've learned since getting out is we didn't do that. And if we would have done that, we probably would have gotten out a lot sooner. Yes. And we just want to try to help somebody or encourage somebody who may even be out already, but just kind of feeling maybe a tiny bit lost because they don't have that comfort blanket again. Mm -hmm. So we do, we've gotten the question a few times, where do we go to church now? Mm -hmm. Um, And we understand that that's something to be curious about for sure. But we also understand that it's important to um, make sure that you are ready, first of all, and second of all, really to find something that's biblical, a biblical church. Um, So, And that might look different for some people than it looks for us. That's why we wouldn't necessarily recommend a church right off the bat. Um, I think that especially depending on how long you've been in the church, um, I think it's more important to find community and have detox from these systems um, than it is to just jump into another Mm -hmm. system right away. That's my personal recommendation. Yeah. Well, especially emotionally, you're going through a lot when you leave a church Mm -hmm. and especially if it was abusive in any, in any way, or, um, if the leaving was really hard to do, or, you know, if people gave you a tough time, you're going to be struggling emotionally for a while. So that's not ever a place to be making a big life decision. Yeah. You know, um, anyway, so that's what we, we want to, if we can, help someone not spend 30 years in it like we did. (laughs) Yeah. We would like to do that. Uh, I'm going to just read Colossians 2.8 right now, um, just just to start off with. I think we'll have probably a little bit more scripture in this episode than maybe normal episodes. So kind of buckle down if, um, hopefully that is encouraging to you. If if it's not, then this might not be the podcast for you. But Colossians 2 verse 8 says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, Mm. according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Yeah, so there's a call right there to Christians to, and I'm just thinking beware that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. Empty deceit for me, especially sitting in a church for 30 years where there was false promises Mm -hmm. and there was threats in a good way and in bad ways of things that would happen. Um, 
that never did. Even if I did what they told me to do. Yeah. So um, it's very damaging to your faith long term. Yeah. So I just thought of that right away when you were reading that. Yeah. Um, I just think the more that we study God's word, the more that um, outside of the context of the UPC doctrine, the more that God comes alive to us through his Holy Spirit. And um, as I do research for the podcast or we watch some of these services, sermons, it's just amazing to me how they twist God's word over and over and over again. Um, and a lot of times they don't even read passages in context. They'll take an Old Testament passage. Um, yes. And make it into some um, Western Christian philosophy um, twisted into you and I and what we can apply from that when it was a physical thing that was going on in the Old Testament and and somehow eisegesis into that, you and I today. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just amazing to me. Once you once you can step back and see that, it's it's really hard to sit under that anymore. Yeah, it's hard to put the glasses back on once they've come off. Mm-hmm. And they do all of this in the name of God, so it's hard to believe that they're not right. So um, I grew up with a couple pastors that said, um, you don't need to worry about me getting it wrong. God will deal with me if I'm wrong. So you you don't worry about me. You just obey, you know, without any yeah. sort of... Um, it's a lot to unpack. It's really a lot to unpack once you start to see all the layers of control. Yeah. And so it's, we're hoping that through each episode, we can just kind of open up another door or shine a light on another subject. And that it may not be something that you go, Oh, I never thought of that. Sometimes it may be, sometimes it may just be confirmation of what you've been seeing or, um, even the Holy spirit has been, it prompting you through God's word as you've studied. Um, if you have questions, like there's nothing wrong with questions. No. Um, if you go to God's word and you find that the questions that you have are contrary to what your, um, pastor is saying or the, the church that you're in now, then that should be a red flag. Absolutely. Or if you're, if it's, a, if there's like a deflection, I think I've said this before about like, if they say, well, um, no, you're understanding that verse wrong, mm-hmm. or you probably need to spend some time praying about this. It doesn't sound like you're really in a good space. Yeah. Um, well, there's very, there's a lot of, um, spiritual abuse in these churches and there's a lot of twisting. And so this, tactics. this authority over you to be able to make you think you're maybe, um, out of God's will or that the devil is trying to deceive you. Yes. Um, all plays a part in it. So. Yeah. And, uh, Paul praised the Bereans, right. For taking what he taught them and checking it, checking it and probably double checking it. So, um, I don't know really, I'm sure we don't have pastors listening to this podcast, you know, maybe, but, but sometimes they will tell you that you don't question them. Right. But scripture tells us differently. We are to be testing the spirits and being aware of false prophets and exposing Mm -hmm. people who have evil deeds. So don't ever live under the assumption that you can't speak up or that you can't question. Yeah. Well, this isn't the episode we're going to get into more about pastors and pastor worship and what a biblical pastor would be. There's only one scripture in the new Testament that even uses the word pastor. 
and it's actual, actually plural. It's talking about pastors, and it's really talking about shepherds um, yes. in the context of um, the verse. And so you can't find anywhere in the New Testament any scriptures that um, show what a modern Western pastor looks like where in the case of the church group that we came out of where you have one man being the authority over everyone Mm -hmm. in the church and making all the rules and making all the decisions and that you are basically coming against God if you question what they say. Yes. That is like what you were just saying. That is not what the New Testament scripture teaches us. Teaches us. Mm -hmm. And once you kind of unpack that truth, it can really, really help you. Because I think for some, it, there's a lot of fear because these churches operate under a lot of fear. Um, you can you can have this um, mentality that I'm I'm the one that's wrong here because I'm questioning or yes or that I'm going to be judged because I'm questioning. And in fact, the Bible and the New Testament teaches us the opposite. It teaches us to work out our own salvation and to, again, like the Bereans, study what someone that you're putting in your life as someone that's supposed to be shepherding you or guiding you, are they they doing that biblically, A? Are they using scripture as a tool and a weapon against you Mm -hmm. as opposed to what the word of God is supposed to be for us, which is a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. Right. Oh, all these things you're saying is so good. Um, I'm going to read the scriptures that we have about working out your own salvation because, Mm -hmm. um, it's a good first call. I think to a Christian that we stand we're responsible for our own walk with the Lord and we are going to stand before him alone one day. Mm -hmm. And thankfully by his grace, we'll do that with confidence. Yeah. Um, Praise the Lord for that. Uh, Philippians two and verse 12 and 13 says, therefore my beloved, as you have always obeyed. So now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, in Mm -hmm. you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So he's right along with us as we're doing it, right? As we're working Mm -hmm. it out. But um, even more importantly is no one can do that for you. No one should be doing that for you. If someone's trying to do that for you, obviously we've got the parent child relationship. You know, that's when we're children. Train up a child. Yeah, that's, that's very different, but there's a, there's an age of accountability when you are going to have to be responsible. Yeah. And I, I don't know the original of what that fear and trembling work out your own salvation with fear and trembling is meaning. I take it to mean seriousness with seriousness and intention. Mm -hmm. Um, But I could be wrong about that. So, (laughs) right. I just feel like you should be studying um, to work it out, you know? So, um, and then one more scripture I wanted to read about that. Ephesians 4, 14 and 15 says, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, but by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. That's also different than what they teach you because they say the pastors in the line of hierarchy the, you know, the God given authority, it's like God, then pastor, then husband. Yeah. And they use a scripture about giving account uh, for your soul yeah. out of context as a um, proof text for that. I think one of the big points we're make 
trying to make in this episode, and we're, we're slowly getting there, is there's lots of warnings in the New Testament to the yeah. New Testament churches about false teaching, about twisting of God's word, about false prophets, yes. about um, people coming along and taking God's word for their own purpose and their own gain, their own deceit, their own greediness. Yes. And we're to be we're to be very smart and on on guard for this stuff. And that's what we were not taught um, when we were in this organization. It was like, we're the only ones that are right. You believe everything we say. Um, if you have a question, you come to us, we'll show you through proof text that you're wrong. And um, just get in line and get under authority. It's all about that. And <sighs> so... What I'm trying to say is we're actually supposed to be on guard constantly that someone might be trying to deceive us and that our anchor is back to God's word and what Christ did on the cross for us, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which Amen. is that he died on the cross, he was buried and he rose again, and that through that sacrificial um, offering of his for um, our sins— and to fulfill that perfectly, <laughs> yeah, we now have um, salvation through that, and um, our relationship with the Father is restored, and we can, and we can have the hope of heaven and and living for eternity. So it, it's it's a very positive, uplifting thing, but it's but there's a whole lot of stuff that's going to come along our journey to get us distracted from that. Yeah, and I'm just sitting here thinking when you add the whole money thing to it, especially with the pastor role, uh, you know that they're making a full and bountiful living. In from people. some cases. Yeah. It's really hard not to assume <laughs> that they are trying to keep that. That's their livelihood. Mm -hmm. So I've said this for many years. I feel like a lot of the stuff that's coming across the pulpit is to dumb down Christians and to make them more immature dependent. and to make them more dependent and to teach them that they have to come to the house of God to get their next fix. Yeah. It's like your gas tank is empty every week. You got to go to the gas station and get a refill. Yeah. That's pretty much what they're trying to do instead of having a daily walk with God and knowing that his word can again be, what all we need and that we have great tools that are taught to us in the Bible, like prayer and supplication to, to our father. And, um, and maturity is the Holy spirit, like dealing with us directly because mm -hmm. he does and he will. Yeah. And, um, and then living that yeah. through good works and, um, the work of the fruit of the spirit in our life. Um, so, I think that it takes a real big mentality shift after you get out of the church to realize that I know for myself, I'll just speak for myself. I was just so immature spiritually mm -hmm. and I didn't understand really the vastness and greatness of what God had done and how his spirit can transform your life. Yeah. Um, because again, it was just works and it was just, punching the time clock and it was just do, 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 do all the time mm -hmm. instead of it's a sweet relationship with God and how, right. Mm -hmm. And there's not this, um, weight on my shoulder that I've got this father in heaven. That's just ready to drop the hammer on me. Yeah. <laughs> and if you didn't experience that in the UPC, then I, you must've been in a different a different system than we were. Yeah. Well, I was thinking a lot of people just would say to us, well, then you were never a Christian to begin with. You were never. And it's just kind of crazy because we spent 30 years and everyone acted like we were right along beside them. So how are we any different than anyone that's in the UPC now? You know, we mm -hmm. spoke in gibberish tongues. We repented and were baptized in Jesus name. We did all the things on the outside that we were supposed to do. We, you know, we followed the rules. Yeah. So we just, I mean, as far as the UPC goes, we know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> 
So Right. Um, and we weren't in every single UPC church. I know that there's a variety of yeah. um, pastoral styles yes. and even to the degree in which the standards or the rules that they sure. um, put on people vary from church to church. So, but we also got around and we, you know, we knew of other styles and churches. So it's not like we were, um, you know, just locked in one room the whole, our whole life. Yeah. <laughs> so uh. anyways, um, did we already talk about, um, you know, the point of the podcast, um, as some might think, well, why don't you just leave well enough, well alone with it? You know, you're out now. Those, if the people are happy in the church, Mm -hmm. just let them be happy. And, um, it shouldn't matter. Right. Yeah. I know we've talked a little bit about that in the past. We have. Yeah. And I mean, ultimately we're not going to convince anyone that doesn't want to be convinced. And ultimately the light has to be turned on in everyone's own mind. Yeah. We can do what we can as much. I mean, in my most honest and at the very core of my desire is to see people who are in these systems to be out of them. Yeah. Um, And for those that are already out to be free in their mind from, and you're automatically free as soon as you leave for sure. Like there's a huge yeah. weight that's lifted. Can I just, can we just say that like right now to anyone that's listening that might still be in like your, your best day in the, the system is if far um, worse than yeah. Then your bad day outside. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I knew what I was trying to say. I didn't say it very well, but like, yeah. Please hear two people. We came out at different times and um, I can say with 100% certainty, and I've been out for several years now, um, I I don't regret that decision one second and the freedom that I have now in Christ and thank the Lord I didn't like lose my faith, but um, I just want to encourage someone that may, um, may just be, uh, you know, on the fence again, wondering, you know, am I going to regret this decision or is it going to be really hard? Will there be things that you have to, to, to deal with? Yeah, of course, depending again sure. on your circumstance, but, um, there is so much resource out there and, and, um, to help and, and community, but also just the Holy spirit will help you and oh, guide yeah. you. And I can say within my spirit, like the freedom that I felt, when I finally made that decision and I said no more, um, was amazing, was really unbelievable. And then the way that God, um, just led me through his truths after that was amazing. And I just remember several times right after reading God's word or studying through different resources and just tears flowing down my face because I felt the amazing love and grace of God really for the first time in my whole life and all the other experiences in the church, you know, were really just emotional manipulation when I look back at it. Yeah. Well, it's for freedom that Christ made us free. That's Mm -hmm. what the Bible says. So he had freedom in his mind. I mean, that's, we're not supposed to be bound and we can say, you and I can say on the other side of it, it's worth, it's worth the decision. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, so no. today's episode is might be just a little bit different than some of the ones we've done recently. And we'll get back to um, uh, coming against the different teachings and, and even the preachers that we're studying and re, um, researching the practices. The practices. That, yeah. um, we're not going anywhere, <laughs> uh, if it nope. sounds like that. Um, in fact, hopefully we'll be recharged in the new year to come at it even harder because again, I feel like it's so damaging. And if just one little thing that we can say or show will help somebody else is worth, um, it's worth really, um, all the painful hours of listening to these people. I mean, it's painful sometimes. And sometimes I'm just like, Oh, I just don't want to do this anymore as far as listening to 
the one church we were screaming. Yeah. One church we were watching. I mean, I finally just said, I can't do it. Like I've got to have, I've got to have a break. We can't Mm -hmm. watch this church for a while. (laughs) Yeah. Boy. Uh, And you said earlier that you didn't think any pastors were listening, but if for some reason um, there is a UPC pastor listening or um, somebody um, shares this with them, I'm calling these pastors to repentance. Um, Yeah. Because they're leading people astray and they're damaging faith and they're twisting God's word. And I don't want to see them go to hell either. Um, So I do this out of love because I want to see them in that same freedom that we're talking about. Absolutely. And I think it is hard when your livelihood depends on that. But um, I'm calling you to repentance Um, to turn from twisting of God's word and um, spiritually abusing people and manipulating people for your own, your own reasons. Yeah. Your own gain. And yeah, you might have to find a new career, but it would be no much more noble than it would be than, than leading people astray. And of course they don't see it that way, you know, but I, I mean, at the very least, please just, read the word out loud, get up and read the word. Like that's yeah. all you have to do. The, the Holy spirit, we, we, we harp so hard on trying to get people to be good, to win God or to keep God or to keep our salvation. And they can say that all they want. Pa- I've heard pastors my whole life say, you don't get good to get God. You get God to get good, right? Mm-hmm. That's crazy to begin with. Right. Even the get God to get good part mm-hmm. because we're sinners. We yeah. always will be until he comes to take us out of here. Thank God. Um, that is our hope. And I lost my train of thought. That's what happens. <laughs> it's all the years I um, get preachy <laughs> sitting in the in the church. I was saying at the very least, read just read the Bible. That's oh, that's what I was gonna say, is that we try to get people to change, but there's a little tiny magic formula, right? And it's if you preach the Bible and you preach the like the fruit of the spirit and stuff like that. The Holy Spirit does all the work. It mm-hmm. helps people to. Yeah. And I think they would say they're doing that. But at, in our yeah. research, and again, we were in it for 30 plus years. It, it, it doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't sometimes do you don't that. see it till you're out. So um, for some, they may think that we're being really, really strong. But the, but again, um, and we're, we'll give you some scripture here now um, that, the apostles warned us uh, against these kinds of teachers. Um, Romans 16, 17 and 18 says, I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Oh boy. Avoid them for such persons (laughs) do not serve our Lord Jesus, but their own appetites and by smooth talk, and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Oh boy. And how many people did we see come in that were clearly naive mm-hmm. and, and or get struggling or, you know, mm-hmm. just in a hard time of their life. And the church is good at being attractive to those people. Yep. Yeah. You got to watch out for, and again, this isn't just pastors, right? I mean, like these are, this can be your friends, your Bible study teachers, your small yeah. group leader. You got to be ca- very careful. Mm-hmm. Matthew seven fifteen through 20 says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Mm-hmm. You will recognize them by their fruits. That's the thing. If you question the behavior of someone who's teaching you God's word, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I mean, and by the fruits, they don't mean what their life looks like on the outside. Right. I mean, that's not what the scripture is saying. It's the fruits is how they treat people, Mm -hmm. how they are behind the scenes. 
Yep. Um, let me go on to Second Corinthians eleven and thirteen. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. We've got all kinds of men that are claiming to be apostles these days. Yeah, or hearing from God. Yeah, and no wonder. For and you. having a word from God. Yeah. I'll just put this in right now. Like, if they think they have a new, fresh word from God, it's and it lines up with the word of God, then what's the point of it? There is no point. Let me say that again in a different way. Like, they think that they have some fresh word from God. Well, we should be measuring that against God's word and seeing if always. it lines up always. Always. Is what someone saying God said, does it line up with the word of God? Both kinds of prophecies, right, too? Like the foretelling one and the reading or preaching God's word. Yeah, because because the word of God is very explicit on the qualifications for a biblical prophet. And yes. that is is that they um, have to be 100% accurate. They do. Um, but that's for another episode. <laughs> um, and so if they are doing that, if they are speaking on behalf of God and saying God told them, then we're supposed to be checking that against the word of God. And if, if it matches, then, then why aren't they just reading God's word? Right. Yeah. They're almost acting like they're coming up with something new on their own. Well, there's this teaching that we need a fresh rhema word. We need a fresh spoken word that the Bible is not enough for us. Absolutely. But as we've read in previous episodes, the Bible in its completion has everything we need for teaching, reprove, correction, all Amen. the things that yes. it says. Um, so did you want to fi finish Second Corinthians? Sure. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. That's why we call for repentance because we love, especially our previous pastors, but we love men like that enough to call you to change mm -hmm. what you're doing to people. Yeah. And I would say just, you know, um, take, take some time off. And really study the history of the organization that you're a part of because it is so rife with deception and twisting and um, these these men that they claim from their history are... Well, the UPCs for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like Charles Fox Parham and even the Azusa Street Revival. You have, you have a, a version of that that is... Not correct. Not correct. And very one, like one sided through, again, glasses that are only showing what you think happened. Yeah. Um, well, and it's interesting because they only look at Charles um, Fox Parham for one specific thing he did, which was to, to create their tongues foundation mm -hmm. doctrine. Um, but they don't even follow the rest of his life where he was. Yeah you know, all kinds of really bad things. Yeah. Second Peter two, uh, chapter two, verse one says, but false prophets also arose among the people. So yeah. like already in, in, yeah. in that time, just as there were, there will be false teachers among you. Yes. Who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, mm. bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. Mm. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle. And their destruction is not asleep. Oh boy. It's dangerous if you are someone who's not preaching the unadulterated, unchanged word of God and the gospel that the apostles put forth for us, you know, 
the gospel. Did I say gospels? I don't know if you said <laughs> gospels, but um, I think people knew what you meant, but thanks for correcting it. If not, because I didn't mean Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> oh, just, right. I meant the gospel. Yeah. I kind of felt like I well, said plural, but yeah. that's not what I meant. Um, Galatians 1, 6 through um, 9 says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you into the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Oh, not that there is another one, but there nope. are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, mm. let them be accursed. And as I've said before, so now I say again. So he's, he's like saying it twice. <laughs> if anyone preaches to you a gospel contrary to the one you've received, let him be accursed. And uh, we know what the gospel uh, that Paul preached was. Yes, we do. So that's just some of the scriptures that talk about being aware of false prophets. There's there's many yes. other, and we'll put some more in the, dis- uh, in the description below. But all throughout the New Testament, almost every book, there's warnings to us about about it um yeah one more real few. quick second john says for many deceivers have gone out into the world those who do not confess the coming of jesus christ in the flesh such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist Ooh. watch yourself so that you may not lose what we have worked for but may win a full reward mm-hmm. everyone who goes ahead and does not abide in the teachings teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the father and the son. (laughs) If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. So we have some strong admonition about people teaching false doctrine and teaching things that Christ didn't teach or that Mm -hmm. the apostles didn't teach. Yes. And then we're also instructed to test every spirit. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in reading these scriptures that we have here because I just kind of want to see how you do that. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it says, I mean, I I can come up with some of my own, but. Again, this is probably not going to happen to you just in your day-to-day life, although it could, Mm -hmm. but it's probably going to happen to you in a setting that would be appropriate for that to happen, which I would say could be a church or like you said, a Bible study or a fellowship group or something. So you need to be very careful and um, not just believe everything, especially if it's just coming from um, people that you have trusted because they're in an authority figure in your life, a a, a authority figure in your life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Those are the ones you, you should check even more Mm -hmm. to see if they match up to the Bible. Uh, first John four, one through six says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that could, oh, this is it. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. No, well, there's people that don't believe that Jesus came at all. I know. It's crazy. And then um, we're also instructed to expose, mark, and avoid. Mm-hmm. In Ephesians 5.11, it says, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Yes. Second Timothy 4, chapter, chapter 4 says, 
For the time is coming when people will not endure (laughs) sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers that suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Mm. And that's the danger. That's the danger of being in a system that's teaching all sorts of things that are contrary to God's word. And it's wrapped around in some truths that um, make you feel and believe like that you've got it all figured out. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's a lot of traditions of men. It's a lot of twisting of God's word. It's a lot of um, proof texts to make you um, conform to a system that is just contrary to the gospel. Well, and it's a lot about self these days. So it Mm -hmm. definitely appeals to that you know, itching of the ears, it feels good to hear about how can I do better? How can Mm -hmm. I be better? Why do we, why do we want to hear that stuff anyway? Yeah. Um, let's see. First Timothy 520 says, as for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all so that the rest may stand. And that's what we have done, um, in a way tonight. So, um, I know it might be it might sound a little harsh, but again, we're instructed to do this. And that's why, um, we're coming against the system is because we want to see people free. We want to see people delivered. And, um, we still have, you know, we still have people we love in the system. And so, um, we're supposed to, um, challenge something that comes against, God's word. And this is where it gets a little tough because some would say, well, we are preaching the what? truth yeah. and the, and the one and the only way. And so, yeah, that's why you have to, um, you have to, well, you look at the big picture. First of all, you look at patterns, you look at fruit, mm-hmm. fruit is very important. Um, and also at this point, I, I probably wouldn't consider having a pastor in my life anymore unless they knew how to read the original text. Yeah. I think that's very important because that really takes us back. At least the most of what we have takes us back to. Well, I think if you're going to have someone that um, you're relying on teaching you and your children, the context of what the passages mean, they have to understand or have, um, studied what that means in context and what the original passage means. Um, and so I, I think that we would encourage people, um, that are looking for something, um, different than the UPC, like some of the things that we, um, would recommend would be, you know, good expository teaching where they're teaching through the passage of scripture Right. Um, they exegete the text, they preach it in context, and that they, they have a gospel centric message every single service. Yes. So, yeah. um, All anyways, of those are really good. I'm just looking through my notes to see if there was anything else that we wanted to share in this, in this episode. It, uh, can seem kind of a downer type message, but it really isn't. It's it's exciting to know that we have the responsibility and and God's given us, we have his word. So that's so helpful to us as a, as a believer. Mm-hmm. And um, the fact that we can read it for ourselves and understand it for ourselves Um really gives us a good responsibility and it does feel good when you, I mean, it feels good when you accomplish something, you know, of course, but scripture really is alive and powerful. So, yeah. And it should be pointing us back again to our theme scripture, which is, you know, that we have this awesome promise through faith in Christ yeah. Um, and it's not because of something that you and I can do. We yeah. can't work it up because on our best day, we're going to fail. 
And on our best day, yeah, we're not going to even measure up. You know, that's what sin is. It's missing the mark. It's falling short of um, what God intends us to do. And mm-hmm. um, and thank the Lord that he's given, his, given us his Holy Spirit to help empower us um, through sanctification, you know, and that's a, that's a daily journey. And so give yourself grace and mercy through the journey. And, um, yeah, again, um, we're just, we're just putting this episode out as a clear, um, kind of just a mark, a a post in the sand, so to speak, or in the, in the, in the ground of, what our intentions are with the podcast and just a call to, to those that are, um, you know, just waffling or wondering if, if it's a good decision to leave, like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just take our word for it. No, don't do that. That would be, um, study and, and no, seriously. I mean, yeah. like, seriously, I'm, I'm not joking. Um, you're, you're only going to, prolong the situation. Uh, if I look back, one of my regrets would be that I didn't get out sooner. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And there's reasons we all stay longer than we should, you know, and those are nice reasons, but, um, they're not helping anything. They really aren't. Yeah. Um, you're not going to fall apart. No. And whatever does fall apart, God will be there to pick up the pieces and help you along the way. I mean, it's. Yeah. And that's just our encouragement and our suggestion. Like we're not telling anybody what to do either. Um, Everybody's journey looks different, but our recommendation would be to get out um, as soon as you can and, um, and start your journey to. Of of, freedom. Of freedom and the grace of God. So. Amen. It's been encouraging to me just to listen to my, listen to our own selves. <laughs> <sighs> Having a conversation you know, in your own say, head. Those preachers say, I'm preaching to myself. I think they say or something like that. It's like, I'm preaching more to myself than I'm even preaching. To I him. never heard it's that. Like, oh, I heard that so many times. Babe, you had to have You heard, heard that. that so many times. I'm preaching yes. to myself. Oh, I never heard that. I don't know why. I don't, or oh, I don't remember crazy. it. crazy. Well, I think they would say like, I'm preaching more to myself or, you know, I'm not just getting I mean, I've preaching. heard that, but not, n- yeah, no, I, my I, point is, are they really, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know either. Uh, Anyways. Well, it's been fun. Thanks for joining us. And if you, we hope it was encouraging yes. in some way. And if you stuck with us this long, um, Some of our episodes are longer and we appreciate those that stick around with us through the end to the end. Mm -hmm. And, um, if we earned your like and subscribe and share and comment, we would love to have that from you for sure. And always we enjoy your comments and your stories down below. Yeah. So until next week, we hope that, uh, You're blessed and encouraged and um, have a great week. Yeah, we'll talk to you next time. Okay, see ya. Okay, bye.